A few weeks ago, I was invited to visit Lursen's amazing shipyard in Hamburg, Germany. Now, Lursen are known for building many of the largest luxury yachts on the planet. But in Hamburg, they specialize in the repair and refit of all kinds and sizes of super yachts. One of the things that I learned during that visit was that not only do Lursen do business in a world of extreme wealth and luxury, but they also appreciate the importance of letting your hair down, socializing and relaxing with the people who represent their clients. Now they've invited me to their yearly rowing regatta where over 200 super yacht captains, designers, industry professionals are invited just to come and to have a good time. But the day before that, they invited the six finalists of Boat International's Young Designer of the Year Award. Now this is a very prestigious award in our industry. And they also invited me to accompany them on their tour of Lursen's facilities so that I can report back to you. Larson have been hosting the finalists of Boat International's Young Designer of the Year Award for over 10 years now. The company has always sought to encourage innovation and innovators, and this is an opportunity for them to give a new generation of yacht designers an amazing insight into the world of super yacht construction. The event kicked off at Larson's production facilities in Rendsburg, where the young designers were welcomed by one of the Larson family, along with Larson's staff who organized the event. The stars of the show though were undoubtedly the young designers themselves who had been commissioned to design a motor sailing yacht between 80 and 84 meters for the competition. So let me introduce them and their designs to you. Emre Sitir, a young Turkish yacht designer, submitted Snowflake, so-called because it is totally unique and very lightweight, employing diesel electric propulsion, an expanse of solar panels on the roof, diner rig sails, and controllable pitch propellers that actually generate energy when the yacht is under sail. Enrico Mezzasama, on the other hand, is a remarkable young Italian yacht designer whose design, Project Seif, incorporates many of the best design features of both motor and sailing yachts, with large windows to make for a light and airy interior and a gorgeous beach club. This yacht too benefits from diesel electric propulsion and diner rig sails. Let me move on to Andreas Kamaris, a Greek Italian designer and his concept called Nabucco. This 80 meter motor sailor has diner rig masts positioned at each end of an expansive sun deck and carrying 1,800 square meters of photovoltaic sails. Added to this, the hull is conceived to have 800 square meters of multi-layered photovoltaic paint that can absorb direct and indirect light. My heart was won by Tao Li though, as were the hearts of just about everybody who met her at this event. Tao had never designed a yacht before in her life when she entered the competition. And in fact, she worked as an intern at a company in China that designs high speed trains. Her mentor encouraged her to submit a design and so the spectacular project Oasis was born. Inspired, she says, by paper umbrellas and Asian architecture. Oliver Clark, on the other hand, had just finished studying design at Coventry University, and I was able to talk to him about his design, Project Serrate. And also the winner of the competition, Yihan Lu, and her winning design, Project Manta. Yep, so the idea was, it's, it's always about continuous surfaces, so I wanted to continue the theme around the back, and the idea was when you're going up these steps, um, there's glass, every other step is glass, so 
Visually, it's not a big visual mass. Uh, so when you're walking up the stairs, you're then greeted by the name with the infinity pool. So the actual water flows around the name. So it's kind of spectacularization oh. as you're walking up the boat. So the deck inside here, um, straight into the dining room. And so the idea is you can sit in a dining room and you'd look out and see the pool reflection on the roof and out to the water. Now I know that viewers of my YouTube channel, um, aspiring yacht designers, will want to know how you got into yacht design. Can you just quickly tell me the, the route that led you to, to becoming a designer? Um, well, I always loved boats, but my main passion was car design. So oh, yeah. I joined Coventry with the idea I was going to always design cars. Yeah, because Coventry University is big in, in automobile design, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Especially in England, it's the place to be for it. Yeah. Um, so it drew me there and then third year, you got given a chance to design yachts, uh, focus in that direction. So we spent the third year doing yachts and that's where I kind of the focus came from. And what about now? Where do you, where do you think the future leads? Car design or, or yacht design? Uh, definitely yacht design. Uh, it actually is inspired by Stingray, so that's why it called Menta. And the task we get, uh, like we receive, actually is we require to build an eco-friendly, modern, elegant 80-meter sailing boat. So at the moment I thought, okay, I want to look for something that just has a beautiful line, but also have some meaning behind. So I start to look endangered species. And one of the endangered species is stingray. So I start to get a line, the movement, everything, and here we are. The um, open space, so actually it's a foldable uh, stair. So when you come in, you can see the two infinity swimming pool and also it's a water feature to welcome you on the boat. So, and also here, there's a sunbathing area. And when you go up, you have a big areas of the, the outdoors lounge. And you come in and because of that, and then it's a indoor salons dining. And also it's the old men, like master suite. It's, in the, it's on the main deck. And in the upper deck is is entertainment deck. So the outdoor sunbathing area with movable furniture. So after the sunset, you could reset as an outdoor cinema. And then you can see the gym, sport, cinemas, and the bridge for the crew. Now, for the viewers of my YouTube channel, yes. uh, uh, many of which are aspiring yacht designers. <laughs> tell me tell me a little bit about how you got into yacht design because you, you've basically you've gone from wanting to do something yeah. to actually doing it and you've yeah. won won this competition. Yeah. What what's what led you to this? I think it's all for my family because my grandfather was a captain. Oh yes? Yes. And so when I was young I usually went to visit him. So when I was young I like little, five or six years old, I was surroundings by sea, beach ships yeah. and when I grew up I fascinated the interior design, architectures, oceans. I always feel like I have a big connection with the ocean so yacht would be definitely the things I do. So you just you just basically got on and did it? Yeah it's like I yeah. really like boat, yacht, yeah. waters, nature. So I studied naval architectures in Taiwan and after that I went to Milan to do the yacht design. Excellent. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. And thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. After a tasty lunch, I accompanied the young designers on a tour around the Rendsburg facility. Now, although there's no hard and fast rule on this, Lursen usually build their smaller yachts here. Smaller, meaning yachts under about 100 metres in length. There was so much to see here, from the huge steel cutting facilities to some truly mammoth sized floating docks and production facilities. But in all honesty, the part that impressed me the most in this part of the visit was the commitment that Lurson project manager Thomas Graustuck showed in imparting his knowledge and his experience to the young designers. It was clear that for him, as for all of the rest of the Lurson staff, this 
It was an opportunity to inspire and to educate a future generation of yacht designers. And he enthusiastically took the opportunity with both hands, spending time to answer his guests' questions in great detail. And it wasn't just them that were inspired. I also left the shipyard with a renewed respect, not just for the size of Lursen and their yachts, but also with their sincere desire to engage with their guests. A desire that was further underlined in the evening when Lurson's sales director Michael Bremen hosted us all for a wonderful and often highly entertaining dinner.